AI keeps accelerating, and over the past few months, we've begun to see glimpses of AI systems improving themselves. So developing superintelligence is now in sight. But there's this big open question about what we should direct superintelligence towards. Imagine an AI so advanced it can improve itself without humans ever touching the code. Meta's Mark Zuckerberg says we're on the brink of artificial superintelligence, an AI that could think faster, deeper, and in ways no human ever could. Meanwhile, Elon Musk admits Google might already be winning the race. And just to raise the stakes, China's humanoid robots are competing in the first ever robot Olympics, a glimpse into the future of AI in motion. SoftBank just dropped $2 billion into Intel, betting big on the chips that power the world's most advanced AI. Because without that computing firepower, none of this progress is possible. And Elon just unveiled a new AI that can generate content that's, let's just say, not exactly safe for work, showing just how far creative AI has come in a matter of months. And that's barely scratching the surface. Mark Zuckerberg has always been vocal about AI's potential, but his latest announcement turned heads. In a policy paper, he revealed that Meta's AI systems have begun self-improving without human intervention. According to him, this is the first step toward artificial superintelligence, or ASI, a form of AI that could surpass human cognition. The progress is undeniable, Zuckerberg wrote, calling it a significant leap toward ASI. Meta's vision builds on prior research, including concepts like Google Machine, a theoretical AI capable of rewriting its own code, but only after proving mathematically that the change will improve performance. Unlike current AI systems, which require human intervention for upgrades, these self-improving models can adapt and optimize independently. Applications are already imaginable. In medicine, ASI could model disease progression, design personalized treatments, or accelerate drug discovery. In science, it could solve equations or simulate complex systems far beyond current supercomputers' capacity. And here's the fun part. Zuckerberg doesn't just want superintelligence for big corporations or labs. He wants everyone to have their own personal AI assistant that can help them create, plan, or even make better decisions. Imagine a personal AI guiding you through your day, helping you make better choices, and unlocking potential you didn't know you had, Zuckerberg said. However, with great power comes great responsibility. Zuckerberg emphasized caution. Not all AI systems will be open source. Some models, capable of rapid self-improvement, will be closely controlled to prevent misuse. Our goal is to balance innovation with safety, he said, underscoring growing concerns about superintelligent AI falling into the wrong hands. But while Meta pushes the boundaries, Silicon Valley is heating up with billions in investment, competition, and controversy, and let's see who's in the lead. Can we talk about how Elon Musk just admitted that Google is winning the AI race? The guy who never admits defeat in anything just posted on X, and I'm paraphrasing here that Google has the highest probability of being the leader in AI development. In a post on X, Musk wrote, Outside of real-world AI, Google has the biggest compute advantage for now, so currently has the highest probability of being the leader. That may change in a few years. So Google's deep mind isn't just sitting around. They've been crushing it for years in AI research, from protein folding to chatbots, and they're pouring roughly $75 billion this year into servers, data centers, and AI infrastructure. That's right, $75 billion just this year. Mark isn't standing still. His XAI venture is building Colossus, a massive supercluster in Memphis with hundreds of thousands of GPUs powering Grok, his flagship chatbot, and Aurora, the AI image generator. Both are getting constant updates, and early users are noticing real improvements. Grok can handle complex questions with surprising nuance, and Aurora produces high-quality images almost instantly. ChatGPT still has the largest user base, but Musk's tools are catching up fast, especially in speed, flexibility, and integration with Tesla, SpaceX, and his X platform. He's not just keeping pace. He's building an AI ecosystem that could operate across satellites, social media, and robotics, aiming to change the game entirely. But Musk's battle isn't only technical. He's publicly criticized Apple for favoring ChatGPT over Grok, and he claims OpenAI abandoned its mission after he left in 2018. What does it mean for you? Faster AI means smarter tools. Your apps, chatbots, and assistants will get more capable, faster. But it also shows this is a high stakes race and the winner could shape how AI touches our lives for years to come. The AI race isn't just about technology anymore. It's a global battle for influence. Think the AI battle is just Musk versus Google? Think again, because major moves are happening off stage and they're already shaking up the market. So while everyone's watching the Musk versus Google showdown, SoftBank just quietly dropped $2 billion on Intel stock. And when I say quietly, I mean it made Intel stock jump 6% overnight, 
so not exactly subtle. Here's what's fascinating about this one. SoftBank's Masayoshi-san, this guy is like the Nostradamus of tech investing. He's not just buying Intel stock for fun. He's betting that Intel's chip manufacturing capabilities are going to be absolutely critical for the AI revolution. With this $2 billion investment at $23 per share, SoftBank becomes Intel's fifth largest shareholder, owning about 2% of the company. That might not sound like much, but in the world of semiconductor manufacturing, 2% of Intel is a big deal. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Intel has been struggling lately, and I mean really struggling. They've lost about 60% of their share value. Their foundry business has been facing challenges, and everyone was starting to count them out of the AI race. But SoftBank doesn't throw $2 billion around for nothing. This is the same company that invested $32 billion in ARM, $6.5 billion in Ampere, and get this, $40 billion into OpenAI. When masayoshi Sun makes these kinds of moves, the entire tech industry pays attention. Masa and I have worked closely together for decades, and I appreciate the confidence he has placed in Intel with this investment. Intel CEO Lip Bhutan personally thanks Sun for the investment. And you can bet this isn't just about money. This is about positioning Intel as a critical player in AI infrastructure, strengthening US semiconductor manufacturing, and making sure there's enough computing power to fuel whatever crazy AI developments are coming next. Because if Meta's building super intelligent AI and Google's throwing $75 billion at the problem, someone needs to make sure there's enough chips to run it all. But speaking of crazy AI developments, let's talk about something that's got everyone talking. Okay, this is where things get complicated. Elon Musk's XAI just launched something called Grok Imagine, and it's causing quite the stir. We're talking about AI that can generate six second video clips, and here's the controversial part. It includes what they're calling spicy mode. Yeah, you heard that right. AI generated adult content. Now, before you start judging, let me give you the full picture. Grok 4 is being marketed as the world's smartest AI chatbot. And the video generation capability is actually pretty impressive from a technical standpoint. We're talking about creative AI applications that could revolutionize art, entertainment, personalized content creation. The potential is enormous. But, and this is a huge but, we're also talking about deep fake technology that can create explicit content of real people without their consent. Haley McNamara from the National Center on Sexual Exploitation put it bluntly. XAI appears to be doubling down on furthering sexual exploitation. And the numbers back up the concern. The AI Policy Institute found that 84% of Americans support restricting non-consensual deepfake pornography. That's not a slim majority. That's an overwhelming consensus. There's actually legislation in the works called the Take It Down Act that's specifically designed to address this kind of AI-generated content. We're talking about legal frameworks trying to catch up with technology that's moving at lightning speed. The ethical implications here are staggering. On one hand, you've got incredible creative potential. Artists could use this technology to bring their visions to life in ways that were impossible just a few years ago. On the other hand, you've got the potential for harassment, exploitation, and the complete erosion of consent in digital spaces. Musk launched this in October with early access for select users, and the internet basically exploded. You've got people calling it the future of creative expression, while others are calling it a tool for sexual exploitation. The truth, as usual, is probably somewhere in the middle, but the controversy is very real. And if you think the debate over AI-generated content has heated, wait until you hear about what's happening with actual AI robots in China. So picture this, 500 plus humanoid robots from 280 teams across 16 countries gathering in China for what they're calling the Roboter Olympics. We're talking about teams from the United States, Japan, South Korea, Germany, the UK, Canada, Australia, and of course, China leading the pack. Plus, several other nations all bringing their best robotic athletes. Sounds impressive, right? Well, it was impressive, impressively chaotic. I'm talking about robots falling over during soccer matches, losing limbs during kickboxing competitions, and completely failing to finish simple running races. It was like watching a million dollar tech demo turn into one of the world's most expensive slapstick comedy. But here's the thing, and this is why I find this absolutely fascinating. These failures are actually showing us just how incredibly complex human movement really is, and how far AI robotics has come in trying to replicate it. The winning humanoid robot called H1 from Unitree managed to run for 1,500 meters in 6 minutes and 29 seconds. Now, before you laugh, remember that the humanoid record is 3 minutes and 26 seconds. So yeah, the robot was slower, but the fact that it could run at all is mind-blowing when you think about the engineering involved. We had robots competing in soccer, kickboxing, track and field, medicine sorting, and even dancing. 
Some succeeded brilliantly. Others faceplanted spectacularly, but every single attempt taught researchers something new about balance, coordination, and AI decision-making under pressure. Kyle Chan from Princeton University made a really interesting observation. China wants to achieve world leadership in robotics, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. The Bank of China has invested approximately $140 billion into AI and chip startups. That's not pocket change. That's a national strategy. What's really wild is watching these robots learn in real time. When one would fall during a soccer match, you could literally see the other robot adjusting their strategies, learning from their teammates' mistake. It's like watching evolution happen at the speed of software updates. And the implications? These clumsy robots are already being deployed in factories, hospitals, and research facilities around the world. What we're seeing at these Olympics isn't just entertainment. It's a preview of the workforce of the future. The fact that they're still falling over, still making mistakes, somehow makes it more real, more human. But it also reminds us that we're just at the beginning of this robotics revolution. The AI world in 2025 is moving fast. Zuckerberg dreams of personal superintelligence. Musk is in a full speed race and China's humanoids are stumbling but learning. Want to see where Musk's AI is really headed? Don't miss our full breakdown of the Tesla Optimus robot. It's unlike anything you've seen.